I want to go right to Mr. Greg Hardy, the president of the school board, and I always plug him, my former wide receiver way back when. Used to send him deep down the sidelines, but uh, this is a different challenge, a different game, so to speak, Greg. And as a school board leader and as the school board, you, you're representing them collectively. How much leeway does the superintendent have? No, he goes. He's good about going to y'all and getting the OKs, but you can't meet every day on things. So you have to have some trust in the superintendent and let him do his thing, right? Yeah, actually what I did, uh, I think it was Tuesday morning that I called an emergency declaration meeting of the school board tomorrow at 10 a.m. Well, a lot of those items or ideals, uh, we are going to address that uh, tomorrow at our school board meeting with Mr. Martin. And in the past, uh, we have, have had hurricanes that we have given him the authority to make decisions uh, unilaterally because, like you said, that we really can't uh, meet every two or three days on everything that actually needs to be done. Yeah, because y'all have families, too. And y'all have damage, and a lot of people have damage. Uh, Philip, is there any assessment of the overall school system? How many families might have had damage, or teachers, or is that just too massive an undertaking to even try right now? A well, lot is not a real definitive answer, but a lot. <laughs> yeah, I can understand that. Uh, Dr. Brumley, let's talk about displacement. Uh, a lot of students are going to have no choice. They're going to have to leave Terrebonne Parish, Lafourche, go to other areas that they feel comfortable. That's going to happen in it. Yeah, and, and before that, I mean, we just have to recognize that the, the educational community uh, has faced a number of crises over the last year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, sh I share with people consistently that I would, I would place the Louisiana educational community up against anything in this country. Not only have we dealt with a, a pandemic and various social issues, uh, but, but, you know, name storms that have been so impactful to communities. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we did last week uh, at the State Department of Education is we cleared the pathway uh, for other school systems throughout the state to go ahead and have the opportunity to enroll students of, of families who are displaced and in their community. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, ev everyone wants to be home, but if they can't be home, they want to make sure that their child is still getting a quality education. And so we mm -hmm. paved the way for systems to be able to do that. But the other side of that is just working alongside Mr. Martin and his team to make mm -hmm. sure that as, as quickly as his schools can possibly reopen, we make that happen so that those families can return to their community. Um, you know, th these schools belong to these communities, uh, and, and that's what makes a school so powerful whenever a community is invested in that school. And uh, so we think we'll see more of that moving forward uh, because of the ownership that these families will continue mm -hmm. to take over their schools. This may sound like a crazy question in an emergency situation, but sports, it's going to be on a lot of people's mind. If they displace and they go to another school, can they enroll? Yeah, that's a, that's a question for um, the LHSAA. They handle all of that. We don't handle that within our agency. But but I do know that, that they are sensitive to those issues mm -hmm. and sensitive to issues when families are displaced because of a natural disaster. Right, no doubt. Uh, Ms. Holloway, let me come back to you. When, you. when you tour in these areas and you're seeing families and you're seeing students, it's got to be a compassion level where you you, you got to feel it. You're how much it of that, like how much of that are you feeling? Feeling a lot, like feeling it now, the empathy that um, we have for our families. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that uh, Superintendent Martin here, along with the uh, president, and uh, even Lafouche, a uh, superintendent, Jared Morton, that we yeah, visited we earlier with, several times. with the leadership of Dr. Brumley, the empathy and the compassion that these men have um, and sharing with their community of people that it's the urgency, yes, education is very urgent in this time. However, the, um, the empathy and understanding that families need to have for them to get their families in order and taking care of their children and meeting the needs of their children at this hour in prep for returning to school. It was so evident um, yeah. in my visits. Yeah, no doubt. Philip, let me ask you, logistically, when you see the damage, is there enough contractors ready to go? Is there enough architects, structural engineers ready to go to for an expedient uh, delivery of goods and services to the school system? 
Yes, I think so. We actually have an army of, of contractors, national contractors, who have, have stepped up, and we're, we are engaging many of those as we speak. So I do anticipate we will have, uh, logistically speaking, ample support to, to, to rebuild uh, our school system. It won't happen overnight, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think that's going to be a challenge finding capable, uh, competent, experienced contractors who know what they're doing to restore our buildings. All right. And uh, Mr. Harding, let me come to you uh, one more time. Uh, you've been around the area, too, for many, many years. You've seen many storms. Don't you sense a lot of people are taking care of their own stuff? They're not waiting for the federal government to come. They're, they're sort of cleaning up on their own, aren't they? Well, yeah, we're very resilient here in South Louisiana. Uh, I'll give you a prime example. I mean, uh, a pecan tree fell on my house. Mm -hmm. uh, and I can say without the pecan tree, my house would have been pretty much sustained, uh, not sustained any damage and stuff. But looking around the community, uh, people are cleaning up their yards. Uh, we're helping each other out, neighbors. Uh, you can go into almost any corner and get some hot food. Uh, with people are cooking, uh, out of state people are doing it. And, and I think what we're doing here is that we understand that we've not been through this rodeo before. Maybe not mm -hmm. as bad as it is now. And we understand what we need to do and how, what we need to do to get back to what we need to get back to normalcy, or try to get back to what normalcy possibly can. All right, we're going to take one more break. We're going to come back and have our final segment with the school board uh, members across the state and, and the local. We're going to talk a little bit more and try to leave you with some words of encouragement. It, it looks bleak, but it sounds like they're on it pretty good, so we'll be right back. Don't go away. 